the door for me. <laughs> Hello there. Welcome to D Extinction 101. This is InGen. <laughs> and this is us, Colossal Biosciences. We're here to ease your worries on that scary de extinction word and set the record straight. <laughs> Maybe we should make it quick. Good thinking. First off, we don't have a genetic testing lab on a secret island with the ethically corrosive capitalistic intent of creating flesh-eating dinosaurs. So no, Colossal isn't bringing back this. Excuse me, that's not a T-Rex, that's a genetically modified bird. Oh no, not this again. The fact that the T-Rex and Velociraptor had a little bit of frog DNA in them didn't really change our opinion as to what they were. Right on, but back to the topic at hand. Colossal isn't building a theme park, and bringing back these titans? Scientifically impossible. So let's dive in, shall we? Let's go! Hey, it's you, Mr. DNA. A DNA strand like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. That's correct. Sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs, left their blueprints behind for us to find. We just had to know where to look. Now hold there a moment. It's not as simple as knowing where to look. We know where to look. I mean, more or less. More or less? No, seriously, we do. But the issue is viable dinosaur DNA doesn't exist. There's no DNA in mosquitoes and amber. It forms in very hot places, which includes encourages the speeding up of DNA decay, and also it's porous, which means that microbes can get in there and chew up the DNA really quickly, making it disappear. So while dino DNA in amber isn't viable for de-extinction, more recent still ancient DNA preserved in ice or museums like mammoths or thylacines certainly is. Bingo. A full DNA strand contains three billion genetic codes. Now that's where our geneticists take over. Thinking machine supercomputers break down the strand in minutes. That's right. And from there, we analyze the target animal's closest living relative. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. <laughs> Wait, a frog? Aren't dinosaurs birds? None of what you just said is good. Easy there, Zora. Cut Mr. DNA some slack. This was 1993. In true de-extinction science, we line up our target animal's closest living relatives on a computer and identify which genes are different and which are the same. Then using genome editing, we tweak the cells in a lab, transform them into an embryo, implant the embryo into a surrogate host, and there you have it. A baby dinosaur. More like a baby thylacine, or mammoth, or dire wolf. I don't see that every day. Or ever. We're sort of engineering today's animals to become yesterday's animals. So once more for the record, Dino DNA doesn't exist. There is no dino DNA. You can't de extinct a dinosaur. Dinosaurs have been extinct for more than 66 million years. We're actually working with DNA that's about 1.2 million years old, as far back as we can go. As soon as an organism dies, the DNA in every one of its cells starts to get chopped up until eventually there's nothing left. There are beautifully preserved bones, but these bones are fossils and there's no DNA in rocks. At the end of the day, de extinction is a tool to rebuild extinct species for the present to restore important components of ecosystems, and while doing so, make incredible discoveries that help current endangered species survive and thrive. If we get this DNA, millions of lives are saved. Our environment and, and to some extent our health depends on being good at multiplex editing. Just like the expedition in Jurassic World Rebirth, we at Colossal are on our own expedition to rescue DNA, to revive species, and restore not just lives, but the planet. That's kind of our specialty.